We've got more breaking news on the ground in Israel. Trey, what are you seeing? Jimmy, I'll shoot a train. You're on. Some more explosions. We're going to wait here in the shelter. Just constant mortar and rocket fire into southern Israel. I'm just going to take this phone here so that I can hear you guys. Um, we're working to get uh, some. You have an English? Um, you can hear some of those explosions still in the distance. Uh, it is, is constant fire into southern Israel. As we work to learn more about those hostages, uh, we're efforting some video for you of just the latest mortar barrage. We have it uh, on camera. We'll bring it to you momentarily. Uh, but these, these uh, barrages continue into the southern part of this country. We immediately get to shelter. The Israelis are expected to increase airstrikes on the Gaza Strip momentarily because 14 days into this war, nearly two weeks, tomorrow morning will mark two weeks, Hamas and Islamic Jihad are still able to fire with these massive barrages towards southern and central Israel. And it is, it is significant because it just illustrates that despite the thousands of airstrikes against different positions inside Gaza, they still can maintain this firing capability. And I'm just going to listen here so I can hear. Trey, we're with you. Uh, we are listening with Trey, you. We're with watching you. with you. Uh, um, just incredible conditions for you and your crew, obviously. Please stay safe. Um, but we heard those, Trey, when we came in there. I know you guys were off the screen at that moment, but we heard them. Yeah, if, if we have the video here, I can, can show you what it was like just a, a moment ago. You can hear some massive explosions right now in southern Israel. Mortar and rocket fire continues to hammer Sterod. Stay back here. Stay back here. You can hear that explosion. One round after another coming in, hitting this community that lies just over the border from Gaza. Stay inside, guys. You can hear another explosion there. A huge barrage. And look, you can see there, at just the short amount of time, about 10 seconds we have to get into shelters, which is why sometimes when you, you're back from break or, or back from a guest, you'll see us inside the shelter describing what just happened, but you saw it there. Those are the moments that we're experiencing here as we try to report along the Gaza border. In the distance, I can hear Israeli drones overhead. They are picking out their next targets inside the Gaza Strip. When we talk about the amount of rocket fire, officials that we've spoken with in Israel are surprised they've been able to keep up these barrages toward the southern and central part of this country. And remember, the ground operation has not started yet. So there is a belief they are still keeping some of their reserves so that they can fire once Israeli forces enter the Gaza Strip. They are battling with all of all of the the fire that they have in terms of short, medium and long range rockets throughout this conflict. The past two weeks, Hamas has actually fired on the northern city of Haifa. And it, it just illustrates the weaponry they're able to make inside the Gaza Strip. We showed you some of the images of the small arms and the IEDs and explosives they could create in Gaza that they brought in when they committed that massacre on October 7th. But the rockets are manufactured inside Gaza as well. And we've been inside Gaza when conflicts have erupted. Back in 2019, when a four-day war erupted between Israel and Islamic Jihad, I was the only international journalist inside Gaza, and we watched as these rockets were being fired from civilian areas, in between buildings, tunnels that you didn't even know were there, uh, being exposed just for a moment, enough time to fire rockets into Israel. And the Israelis sometimes could use those drones to identify where the rocket fire came from and then strike that position. But what Hamas has illustrated over the past two weeks is that they have many, many different positions that the Israelis are not aware of, because otherwise they'd be hitting those positions. They're hidden deep inside Gaza, and it gives you just a sense of the weaponry and how advanced it is and what 
Israel will face when they enter on the ground. And that's part of the apprehension that the troops have that we've talked with. They know they will be ambushed. They know it will not just be rocket fire. It will be roadside bombs, car bombs, IEDs, all sorts of different weaponry that will be used against those forces when ultimately the orders are given to invade. All right, Trey, um, our, we're going to push forward now. The, the State Department briefing will be top of the next hour, 3 o'clock Eastern time. We are expected to get an, an update there. Trey, thank you for the update on the ground. We'll check back in with you shortly. All right, John. Thank you. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.